remember I downloaded Adobe Workshop Photoshop print. It's got some of those words in it. <laughs> <laughs> Adobe's the brand. Photoshop is the app. Oh, is it that what I downloaded? The Adobe Photo Print Shop? Adobe Photoshop. Adobe, the guy from Harry Potter? <laughs> Dobby. Adobe. 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 Adobe is a free elf. <laughs> Kim, word of advice, close your legs. You have more public beef than Kendrick and Drake. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Hey Man. I'm Josh. I am Jacob. Hey, man. Hey, man. What's up? How you doing? Good. I'm amazed you didn't introduce yourself as Matthew McConaughey. Uh, well, listen, I, I, I am going to remind everybody every show that there are people out there who think that I resemble Matthew McConaughey. I, I, um, I, listen, I don't want to upset you because I know probably looking at this Matthew McConaughey face really, you know, triggers you in some way, but just accept how Matthew McConaughey handsome your dad is and let's just move on. All you, right, you know, you know, all right, all right. You know what I'm accepting? You yeah. don't look like Matthew McConaughey. You look like Matthew McConaughey. That is not true. <laughs> with that pink suit on with a cowboy hat? Hey, I'm not yeah. wearing a pink suit. No, what are you not, talking I'm about? I'm talking about when you got the resemblance. Dude, yeah, but listen, to reference something from three weeks ago in That's a joke what now you're referencing. that nobody can see, that you got to at least have a picture or something. Oh, I'll have, right, not, I'll have not throw one in on post. Right now, you, this is more straight up. I drive a Lincoln, this Matthew is, McConaughey. Is, I'll drink some wild turkey, Matthew McConaughey. You want to light one up with Snoop Dogg, Matthew McConaughey. That's, I feel like where I am right now. I feel like now. you're Matthew McConaughey, get off my lawn, you kids. You think I'm old, Matthew McConaughey? Where's my fiber? Uh, yeah, Matthew McConaughey, when's the early bird special? Listen, I'll take it because old Matthew McConaughey, also handsome. So if you're saying along the way, I look McConaughey, I'm saying that's okay. Listen, I don't know why they told me not to rap. That was about as organic as it gets. Yeah, you should have used cap somewhere in there after rap because it would have been a great. Oh, rap. I hopped out of my rap. Oh, into oh I, just I, telling. I thought you. you were gonna say. I thought they, they they couldn't tell me I could rap, but I was telling them that's some cap is what I thought you were gonna go into. But that's why you're not a rapper. Or well, Matthew let, McConaughey. Let me just tell you something. <laughs> I'll take a. I was gonna get a dap, but for, you didn't. for what? Be, just to rap. By the way, this is a fist bump. That's not a dap. That's a dap. This is. Am I gonna dap oh, you up? That's a fist bump. Is not a dap. A dap is one of a dap is this where it's like you. No, no, it's here. That's a dap. That's not a dap. That's a handshake. That's a dap. Dap me up. That's a dap. Yeah, dap me up. No, no, that's a fist bump. Yeah, not when you're McConaughey. Or when you're born in before the. Come on, let's get that joke out of your yeah, mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get the joke. Yeah, yeah. born before the millennium with us. Yeah, <laughs> eased up a little bit. <laughs> Hit the brakes too hard. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but I wore a long sleeve today because the last time I was here, I was extremely self-conscious in uh, a tank top. <laughs> listen, so I covered every inch of my fucking body coming into the show today. Uh, on the other hand, I've been going nuts out in my sauna videos because I feel like that's what McConaughey would do. Dude, that that angle makes you, it's such a weird angle. It makes you look ripped and super malnourished at the same time. Well, sometimes you got to be malnourished to be ripped at my age. That's, the, I mean, as my dad would say, even a starving rat has abs. Yeah. Your dad used to say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he, or are you just making that up? He told me once. He was like, I was like, look at this. And he was like, you know, even starving rat has abs. You so he was just... Making calling fun of me, you. yeah, he was basically calling me skinny, which is a compliment, I guess. Well, I don't take it as either, other it, than him calling you a rat. Yeah, it was kind of a joke. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I I accept all the McConaughey um uh comparisons that I've been getting online, and I say thank you. Online, yeah. When when I posted that video about. 
that person saying I looked like McConaughey, a couple people were like, I can see it. Now, there were probably a couple who were like that. You're not close. 98% of them. How do you know? I'll pull it up. I don't want to pull it. I don't need <laughs> Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> I only read the first three, and they were just like positive, positive, positive. And then I'm like, I'm going to shut this app. This seems to be, I, I'm playing the percentages right now. What are the odds that you get three positives? You know? I, I, I but, but, uh, <laughs> listen, dude. Um, I do want to say, first of all, thank you to all the people in Batavia, Illinois, who sold out those shows um, and brought that amazing energy. Yeah, thank you for showing up to your, coming out of your made-up Narnia holes. I don't know, that place doesn't sound real to me still. Like, Batavia? That doesn't, sound I, like, that doesn't sound like a real place. That sounds like a sub-branch of Narnia. Here's what I do love about Batavia and the small town of it. Great people, though. Great, 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 great people. Great the, crowds. This is what I love about small towns. Stores, independently owned stores oh in small towns, their business hours are a little wonky. The they, craziest? The dude, because dudes or women are just like, yeah, I own this. It's a town of 12,000 people. The, here are my hours. I went into, for those of you who don't know, I buy a guitar in every city I go into and I give it away at the end of the weekend. So I go into this local guitar store called the Instrument Exchange. And Jacob and I show up around one um, because we're going down to get some lunch and I'm like, I'm going to get this guitar first. Yeah. And the hours on a Friday for this guitar instrument store were 2.30 to 6. So I was like, well, those are weird banking hours. Okay. And so we go back at 2.29. There's nobody in the store. It's number. It was, there was not Zero. even. Zero. The, the lights weren't on. He had not showed up yet. So yeah. we, we go back around 3.30 and three people walk in at once and he goes, whoa, nobody's here all day. Now I get three people at the same time. And yeah. I was like, dude, when you're only open two hours a day, all of your customers might come in at the same time. Yeah. We all have to schedule around our schedule to when we can fit in a weird midday early bird special at the fucking instrument exchange. Who's, like, who is he selling guitars to? Unemployed people? 2.30 to 6? That's, yeah. That's Yo. like, that's when the kids get off school to when the parents get off work. And then that's it. Like, who, who comes in in those hours? So I told him because I was, I was doing the mushroom show on Friday and I was like, I, I might come in tomorrow to buy another guitar, which would have been Saturday. Right. And I said, what are your hours? What time do you close? And he said, we close at 4. But get here at qu before quarter two because I'm usually gone. By then. <laughs> so he's only open for four hours, but still leaves early and clearly isn't there when it's time to open either. And he was so flustered by three people walking into his store at the same time. I did get I did get told by somebody at the vault though that his store is closing down. It, how could they tell? It, Apparently he's he said he's going out of business. It's just it, like he's going to retire. Yeah, I think he's kind of retired right now. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, great time in Batavia. The best might have been the best coffee I've had on the road. Great coffee shop. L limestone coffee and tea. I remember yep. it. That's how good that coffee was. Delicious. Holy crap. Uh, we had a great time. Um, and this weekend, we're in Philadelphia. The week after, in Austin, Texas, both with Lee Syatt. And this Thursday, we're in L.A. Yeah, I'm not sure that... This will come out in the morning. Yeah. Of that. But, but if you're there, guys, there's still a couple tickets left. Uh, we would love to sell it out and show Netflix that your boy sells things out. Um, besides that, um, look, man, I uh, the show in Vegas last night was amazing. I had a little, uh, I don't know, I was having a day yesterday, man. But Yeah, I mean, well, you had a day before, though, too. I did throw up. At the airport? Did you say that with a question mark? Yeah, was it at the airport? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, okay. Can I can I talk about it? You yeah, cool of, with course, that? of course. Okay, so uh, Saturday night, um, after our shows in Batavia, they're all chilling out it, uh, in that comedy vault. The employees are chilling. It wasn't the... It was the um, amount of garlic and all of the hummus and all of the pita. That's what I threw up. Pita? Yeah. Did you say pita? Yeah. Sounds fancy. Paida. 
Sounds like a, it sounds a like character you had a, on Game of Thrones. It sounds like you had a stroke midway through saying paella. Pae, paida. <laughs> paida, it sounds like the woman who's going to kill the White Walker. Paida? Arya? Close. Not even. Like, you couldn't be more far away. Uh, both ends in A. Yeah, Frank is further away than, than Paida from Ida. That wasn't, you didn't even get her, her name right that I didn't, time. What was it? You said Ida. Aria. Aria ends with an A. Pida ends with an A. It's got an A and an I in it. Aria. Aria doesn't have an I in it. R. I'm pretty sure it's A R Y A. Aria. No way. It has an is I it, in is it. Is it A R I A? You, you seem like a Game of Thrones guy, Matt. Yeah, it's Y A. It's not. It's not when you translate it to English. <laughs> I was just seeing what? if that was going to land. It didn't. Yeah, that didn't land. None of it landed. Yeah. And so uh, so he ate a bunch of garlic and pita apparently the night before. And uh, he wakes up Sunday morning. We have a flight at 9 a.m., which, by the way, we should start doing that more. Uh, yeah. And, and by the way, can I just say, guys, as somebody who does not eat gluten at all and doesn't eat sugar and doesn't eat garlic, it was just my body just did not digest it. Yeah, it was too much of it. And in the morning, he was having issues, whatever. The minute we get to the airport, we park the rental car. We walk into to get onto the tram to the terminal. We pass the bathroom. And he goes, eh. And I go, why don't you just go try? No more than 40 seconds later, I hear you echoing in that bathroom. You could hear me from outside the bathroom Doug, growing up? I was 25 to 30 feet away Easy. from the entrance to the bathroom. Yeah. Not only could I hear the echoing in there, I watched every single person who was in there walk out and go, oh, what the fuck? I did hear one yeah. person go, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, and everybody else after that outside, because they didn't want to hurt your feelings, were like, oh, Jesus. Like, yeah, I, it was... And then I had I saw I watched one dude walk in there, a dad who was who's, who was like, "I'm gonna use the bathroom real quick." Walked in, heard it, didn't even make it to a urine. Walked right back out. Yeah, came over to his family and he said, "Someone's having a morning in there. I'll catch it at the terminal." Like everybody knew what was happening. And then you came out, and see, this is where also I would say, "Why don't you blow your nose after you after like letting demons out?" Yeah, everything's here. So blowing your nose after is like the way to go gross anywho but he came out could have blown his nose tears streaming down your face yeah it was a violent yeah it was happening it was it was a rough one for sure um but made you made it into the terminal did it happen again yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. oh in, oh in the, in the american express lounge oh after and not in the american airlines lounge. after security yeah got it and then we got back you made it through the flight you didn't have to get up did not i i i if I can fall asleep, if I had stayed awake, I'd have thrown up. Yeah. Yeah. But so we made it back to Vegas. We get off the plane and I legit looked at him and I go, dude, go home. He goes, but you're driving us. I go, yeah, but it's going to take 45 minutes for us to get our bags and at least 10 minutes for us to walk over the car. Yeah. I go, that's an extra hour. You don't have to be here. I go, I will get the bags. I will come drop them off. Go home. And when I came over to your house, I... Mom was, I was texting in our group chat with you, me and mom. Yeah. And mom was just responding for you, just responding, telling me where I needed to be, like what I needed to get to you guys. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to him tomorrow. Like, I, I was just going to let you, you had a day. I was yeah. throwing up on travel days is. You know, I have rough. to tell you out of all the sick things, fever, throw up, bronchial, diarrhea. What are the other ones? Uh. Sne throw up is my most preferred preferred if you're i would rather throw up than have a fever i would rather throw up than have diarrhea i would rather throw up than have terrible cough nah i disagree on every single one of those actually really throwing up legit has it's can i be honest i think it's partially why i don't drink so much throwing up legit top five least favorite thing i don't mind it it actually Psycho. it actually feels I don't get any relief from having a fever for 48 hours. I don't get, I don't feel relief from diarrhea. I actually feel after diarrhea, dr like drained and yeah, worse. Yeah, I, get, I right? get that. I don't, uh, that cough bothers the shit out of me. Yeah. But throw up, I, I'll just throw up. I don't like any of them. Uh, let me just put oh, that course. out there. Yeah, nobody but likes it. I don't like, yeah, you do feel better after throwing up. 
for me though, it's the action. It's okay. If I'm gonna rank them one through four, from best from, to worst, from from most preferred to least preferred. Yes. Okay. Vomit. Nope. Fever. <sighs> Cough. Diarrhea. Yeah. I mean, mo okay, so most preferred, least preferred. Yeah. I'm going cough, fever, diarrhea, throw up. When you say cough, not just like a, but no, like, like a, a, like a chest yeah, cough. Like, like a, like, a, like a, a, I got sick. Terrible, terrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I'm just, cough first. Yeah, I could throw up no, fever. Not a chance. What would you guys pick? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I mean, there's got to be other ones, but those are like your four, like, dude, did you Jesus see the Christ. fucking roast of Brady? By the way, that's how our brains work. Did you? Um, I, I watched. I, I've seen my. By clips. the way, did you see that Nikki Glazer used a joke? And, and by the way, guys, take it easy. She didn't steal this joke. She could have never heard it because it was at the roast of David Ortiz, which never aired. But do you remember I said, Gronk, you put the downs in touchdowns? Yes. Yes. She said that. Rob Gronkowski is not all here. Hey, Rob. Dumb as you look and sound and act and are. No, Gronk, I love you. You put the downs in touchdowns. You really do. You put the special in special teams. No shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hilarious. It was amazing. Guys, so just so you know. And by the way, that's not us, that's not us her getting mad at her. That's no. us so happy that the same joke got used again, I, actually. Yeah, because I was always, out of all the jokes that I told about Gronk that night, I was bummed that that one in particular never get a chance to air. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, I put together a roast of David Ortiz uh, he, before for his retirement weekend, right? Yeah. And we had Gronk and uh, Pedroia and Anthony Mackey and Bill Burr. Tatiana. And, and so we had a bunch of people. And one of the jokes that I did about uh, Gronk. Gronk was you put the downs in touchdowns. Yeah, super funny. And but I want to tell you something about love that joke. The Burr so funny. I, I wish we could air that, but uh, Nesson bought it and then buried it. Smart, yeah, smart on their part because, but also you we would have just killed with that. Yeah, not. I mean, they, they bought it before they saw it. I don't think they understood how roasts go, and they're a family network, so it's not like yeah. they could air it. Um, but okay, do you the Brady roast? Let me, first of all, let me just say this. It, 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 look, there's a difference between, hey, this is a funny comic and this is a roaster. Yeah. Yeah. And Tony yeah. Hinchcliffe and Nikki, and by the way, they're both funny comics. Super funny comics. But Tony and Nikki prove it every time. They are so next level. You, I, I, hard for me to pick which one I like more. I thought Nikki's was nonstop, zero misses. I, I, I feel there like was, I text her after every roast, like, you fucking crushed that. It just didn't feel like there was any breath there, like, and it was perfect. Like it, uh, she just murdered. Like I just, there's no way around it. But low key, my favorite jokes of the night came from Tony, who was like, "Gronk, nice of you to take a break from writing letters to Santa." to join us here tonight. Gronk, I'm happy you could take a break from writing Santa letters to be here today. I fucking how? <laughs> and then he said, I knew you showed up when we ran out of chocolate milk backstage. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Because it was such, Ooh. those are such smart, dumb jokes. Yeah. Are you kidding me? They are, and they're not dirty. No. They are such smart, dumb jokes because what you can fall into as a trap at these roasts is just hitting lowest common denominator mm -hmm. shock stuff without trying to be, without being funny. Yeah. And that's not it because the joke writing, the level of expertise is so high yeah. at this, that you just can't come up in shock value. That shit doesn't work yeah. anymore. But I, yo, Tony, I want to tell you, okay. I have so much respect for him, man. Um, you know, they tried to obviously cancel Tony too. Yeah. And he just, I love people who are like, you're not going to define me. Not only are you not going to define me, I'm going to keep doing what I do because I know that there's merit to it yeah. and people like it. And, and so fucking the, the, they, it was so funny. That roast was it's up there. Yeah. It's up there. Yo, top tier. 
Like I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah. One of my favorites still to this day is that Bieber roast. Yeah, great. That Bieber roast is. But Nikki Glazer going in on Jeff Ross. It, it, Nikki Glazer going in on Jeff Ross is honestly like what I've been thinking about him for so long. Jeff, killer set. Congrats on the weight loss too, man. It must be nice to know that uh, being fat wasn't what made you disgusting to look at. That's... You really put the ick in Ozempic. It's... Jeff, you look like your pronouns are it, that. You look like something cancer catches. Are you pickled? I'm confused. Like, what happened to him? Like, he looks like he started melting and just stopped midway. He looks, you know what he looks like? You know the <laughs> end of the first Indiana Jones where that dude starts to melt? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like they stopped midway and they're like, that's Jeff Ross now. He looks like a half-melted candle. He he honestly looks like a lizard person that went, that they were, they were smelting. Is that what it's called? Like, they were peeling their skin midway and Molting. just... Yeah, molting. Uh, molting? Dude, he, molting? He, yeah, molting. He does. He looks like an old dude's dick at the YMCA. That's what it, it like. He has taken <laughs> ugly to such a different level. Yeah. It, it, honestly, like, I don't, it looks like he started chemo, but he, but he was like, you know, he's mid chemo, not enough to lose weight, but enough to be like, God. Damn, he dude. Ca he like, kind of looked like the afterproduct of like somebody on The Biggest Loser who lo who went back off the diet. He, he looks just kind of like, like he looks like a supervillain that his power is turning into a hairless cat. Dude, he you I've seen older or like when I say older, I mean younger pictures of him. And yeah. I don't know which of him looks looks worse, that one right now or that Jeff Ross in a black fedora. Like both of them are pretty bad. No, both pretty bad. Like, dude, he and why he is as hairless as the women that he tries to fuck. Like he, it is crazy what he fucking looks like His right now. His curtain matches their drapes. Dude, he, he is like, he looks like a run over piece of gum. <laughs> it is the craziest fucking thing the craziest I have comparison. ever seen. Oh my and I don't God. know how this happened. It's a good thing he's a comic. It is because yeah, I think, you know what he looks like? It, honestly, if I was a cop and I was driving down the street, I was like, we should just put him in jail. He's up to no good. Yeah, yeah he yeah. is. Clearly a super villain, because if you walk around looking like that all day, you you mad about something. He looks like Lex Luthor's older and way less successful brother. Dude, he looks like it, it, oh Lex Luthor's Down syndrome cousin, <laughs> is what he looks like. <laughs> it is like he looks like ex Luthor. Yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He looks like he's transitioning, but into a penis. <laughs> Do you know, it is the fucking. It's crazy. Yeah. But I felt like she... He looks like a butterfly who went halfway into his cocoon phase and then just stopped. Yeah, he, it's not... This isn't a good look for him. <laughs> it isn't. I, I mean, and I... Uh, yeah, the the Nikki Glaser line about... Was that... Did she do the crypto? Me not with the, the Gronk. Tom also lost $30 million in crypto. Tom, how did you fall for that? I mean, even Gronk was like, me no, that not money like yeah dude i mean across the fucking board and yeah. and let me just also say uh she, oh that's literally that's the comment right there it says me know that not real money yeah it's so funny the, the the who did the joke i think tony did the joke about hollywood jamming nikki down our throats also super funny. Nikki has such a bad eating disorder, the industry keeps shoving her down our throat. They were so, but t Tony might have had the joke of the night telling Colin, Sam J was a black lesbian. She doesn't go, she doesn't go down. Like she doesn't eat somebody out. She, oh hell gnaws them. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. Sam J, an obese African American lesbian. So by having here, Netflix checked off a lot of boxes. So many Kevin Hart small jokes were great. I love, I love making fun of Kevin Hart. I That's will great. say, at, for Brady, you know, you got to have a good sense of humor. And most athletes, because when after, remember we did the David Ortiz one, I was like, I told the guy who we were running it with, I go, we should do more. And he was like, find another athlete that people care about who has an ego that will take a beating like this. Poppy was the perfect person. 
perfect, mostly because he told me beforehand he doesn't speak English and won't understand what most people are saying. Which about was him. great. Also. But Brady, it doesn't matter what these people say. The goat. He's fucking Tom Brady. The fucking goat. Yeah. I, I, did, I will say, at the beginning, though, did you see when he came in and leaned into Jeff Ross after he said something about Robert Kraft? Yeah. Where he, he said something about Robert Kraft and he came up and he said, don't fucking say anything else about that ever again. And he was like, oh, my bad, my bad. Like, yeah, yeah. Was, do you think that, was that like something Brady actually wanted to say or do you think he just said it as a joke? It, it didn't sound very jokey. I think he wanted him to know that that Robert Kraft shit was off limits and that you can say whatever you want about me, but that's my dude. Is what I think. Interesting. Is okay. what I think. Okay, okay. Um, I, 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 I just feel like that's a, that's a, I guess not a weird line to have. I guess the roast is about him and not about. I, I mean, I do that all the time with you. Yeah, if, that's true. Right? Yeah. Like, I don't give a shit what you say about me. I'm here for it. But don't, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So Fair enough. But I, I thought this was, whole thing was great. I think the, uh, and there was a lot of racial jokes. Tony's joke, Tony's material. Uh, and a ton of Aaron Hernandez jokes. Yes, but my point being, it's crazy to me that people seem to be okay with the edgy jokes in this setting. Yeah, but only if, because it's a roast setting. Yeah, but if you're okay with it, you're okay with it. Oh No, I agree. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. You don't get to just pick and choose. It's like there's a pass for you to laugh at fucked up jokes. Just because that's what the point of it is. And this shows you that everybody has a sense of humor. And a twisted one. Yeah. And, and, and like, it, remember, you know, there was a, um, did you hear me? Uh, I think Saturday night early show. I tell a joke that's. Yep. Right. Yep. Some people like it, man. Some people don't. And I can tell right away that it's going to be too uh, over the line for some people. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. But after the joke. There was a woman up front who clearly didn't like it. Yep. And there was a guy in the audience who was kind of getting on her about it. And I was like, hey, dude, listen, here's the best thing about jokes. You, you get to decide what you like and don't like. Yeah. But you don't get to decide for other people. Yeah, 100%. And this, and edgy jokes are such a perfect example of that. You don't get to decide what's funny and not funny for somebody else. Yeah. You and you don't get to be offended for other people. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that happens a lot when I feel like, you, you know, you, you had a song, you have a song where you like, you make fun of, you know, certain groups of people, mm -hmm. right? I remember how you had different versions of that one where mm -hmm. it was like to incorporate everybody. Yeah, the, it was called the inappropriate medley. Okay, great. So in that, when you would hit a certain community of people, it was always like the one person who would say that's not funny is some random white woman. Yeah. Do you remember that? And it was always like, for me, if you were saying, oh, that's not funny, you can't say that about them, I was always like, you're a closet racist. Like, 100%. Like, that speaks... Why do you think they're a closet racist? Because if you look at, from what I, like, not from what I've seen, but, like, it always shows to me when it's always a white woman. It's just, always is. When a white woman doesn't laugh at, like, uh, an edgy joke, sometimes it's a racial joke. Like, when white, like, when I've seen those white women don't laugh at that, it's they're trying to hide their own kind of views on shit. Mm -hmm. Like it's like they're they're trying to hide it by, oh no, I'm gonna stick up, I'm gonna stick up for this person when they're laughing at the joke, when everybody else is laughing at the joke, but I'm just that one white person in the middle saying, No, nah, you can't say that about other people. They wanna laugh at it, but they don't want them to be outed or think that people think they're racist when they are. I don't know if I think that's true. I think that a lot of people feel like they're going to get bonus points for that type of social justice shit when they're not actually doing anything, just making comments on somebody's page about, you know, fight the inequality or, you know, whatever mm -hmm. you're grandstanding against. It doesn't do shit. It, it doesn't. So the, I don't take those people seriously because I assume they're not doing anything in real life. They're just sounding off on, yeah. I would say this also, I would say a lot of people with prejudices and, or, or bigotry don't think they are racist because they're not out saying the N word and burning crosses. Right. That's not the only form of racism or bigotry or no, th that not. there is. Right. Absolutely. Not. And so like, but I, but 
not everything is racist and not everything. Look, man, as a Jew, uh, and I trust me, now is a time where I'm hearing plenty of Jew hate online. I bet you are. I definitely am. But like, <sighs> yeah, you know, yep, yep. I understand. Um, all right, but the roast amazing. I am going to reach out to, well, now that this is like, we, we, I don't think we could sneak it by on somebody doing another athlete now that Netflix is getting in on it. Yeah, but you did it first. So it doesn't matter. Somebody will see this and there'll be an athlete who will want to do it, but it's got to be somebody with a sense of humor Hard and confidence. Hard to find. I bet you Dion would do it. Oh, I bet you Dion would do it. You uh, just got to be somebody who's so otherworldly confident that all of this shit or with sense of humor doesn't get to you. Was there a roast of Shaq or no? Uh, probably. Uh, Shaq's one of those dudes. Well, but I don't think we roasted Shaq. I think Shaq roasted, but I don't think everyone's ever roasted Shaq. I don't think so. I think maybe I there think, was a roast of Shaq. We'll oh, find really? out. We'll find out. I, I feel like that would be yeah. such a good one. He's uh, the perfect dude for it. Because you can say whatever you want, but he's a 7'4", gigantic human being. Like, it just takes somebody. He's got like, a great like sense of humor. Though. Kobe would have done it because yep. Kobe is was type A, alpha through and through. I don't give a fuck what you say about me. How much money am I getting paid? Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, zero zero chance Michael could do it. Michael Jordan? Jordan? Nah, he wouldn't do it. But think about people who have. I mean, Larry the Cable Guy did it. Yeah, but he's a comic. He yeah, understands he it. it. That's a different level. Gets, like, I agree. I we, agree. Like you would do it. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, I would do it. Just to get the chance to roast everybody else. Yeah. I like writing jokes like that. Yeah. yeah. Like that, like that little Jeff Roth, Ross riff. I, I like shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, dude, I went off on somebody last night at the show. Did you hear me up front? No. Was it right up front? Yeah. No. Oh. Who who my. was it? It was that dude. Yo, and I didn't when I say off, I didn't go off off. Wait, 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 where on the where in the crowd? On stage to the left, just an older guy. The whole fucking crowd. It was an old it crowd. It was like a nursing night. home convention. Yeah. Was it That's, Vegas? I kind of pointed that out. I was like, hey, dude, <sighs> just proof of life. Can you blink or something? Oh, you the dude in the front row who was sleeping? Did you see him? No, I didn't have a sleeping There guy. was a dude sleeping during my set. I almost was like, hey. Was that the dude with the matching pink shoes with his wife from Jacksonville? <laughs> nah, that wasn't it. Direct, okay. Remember the row? There was a row of women right in the front yeah, row. Yeah. They saved me, by the way. Yeah. Nobody was laughing at my shit except the four of them last night. Hello. Shout out to those women. They say they kept me alive up there. But the row right behind him was a dude. Yep. Two, two older dudes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The one on the edge. Yep. I remember at one point he was just doing this and his buddy was like, hey. And he went, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Bro was dozing. Dude, did I ever tell you that story? I let, I let him go, though. Yeah, me too. I was like, ah, I'm not, he, it's, it was Cinco de Mayo. It was I a agree. rough weekend. I'm letting him. Did I ever tell you that story about that I had a, a pitch meeting with Stan Lee? What? Oh, you never knew it. You met Stan Lee? Oh, dude. Okay. Wait, no, no, no. Answer that question first. Yeah, if I had a pitch meeting with him, of course I met him. When was this and where was I? Okay, so. I'm sorry. I'm yelling, everybody. I'm very upset at this I, right now. I... There was an e uh, um, years ago. Um, th I got a email and was like, "Hey, Stanley's company is looking for a superhero hangover movie." And I was like, "I am not interested in that." However, I have an idea for them that I'll go in and pitch. And since mine's not going to be a super superhero hangover movie, it's going to be completely different. They're either going to love it or hate it. Yeah. So I go in and I, I, know where this I give the um, elevator pitch. And they were like, that's great. Can you come back? Because that's what they were just taking. Quick pitch. Yeah. So it was him and his partner at the time, a guy named Gil Champion. What a great name, by the way. And so, so I go back in and I have my pitch. And Stan and Gil are in front of me. And I go into the pitch. And, you know, I'm two or three minutes in. And I'm just in awe of being in front of this man who truly culturally does not get enough oh zhuzh God. for how influential he's been on Americana. Jeez. If you think about Marvel comics, uh, how many young people they have affected the, the over the years, 
the the it's been amazing, right? Just the stories, the and also the superhero culture. Period. End Dude, of sentence. The amount that of money right that's gone into America because of amazing, right? All right. So we're there, and I'm over them, and I tell him right up front. I want you to know how just overwhelmed I am that I'm here with you. I used to order your comics; they were delivered to my house. And he was, he was like, I remember that, that we used to do that. And I was like, yeah, dude. So I, in your, your, you know, my, my brothers and I all collected different comics, but we, we would read them each, each read each other's comics and we couldn't wait till the next one that get delivered. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much for being such a huge part of my life and my childhood and all that stuff. Got to get that out there. I had to. Had to. Had and to, I'm sure he's to. heard, he had heard it. He hears it from everybody he meets. Yeah. hundred percent. Dead, dead now, but. Met. Met. Right. Met. R.I.P. Stanley. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm going to the pitch and I'm like two minutes in and Stan starts nodding <laughs> in the pitch. We're this far away from each other. He starts nodding and Gil laughs at something I said. And instead of slapping his chair, he slaps Stan's chair and he wakes up. Hilarious. So about three minutes later, same thing. He just starts. And Gil again, wham, wakes him up. And so he starts to nod again. And Gil goes, and I go, hey, hey, hey. obviously his battery needs to recharge. Yeah. Like, yeah. When you're that old, the, the life battery is like, right? it's what yeah. happens to Biden yeah. every now and yeah. then. And sometimes you just need 15 minutes to come so back. You just need to recharge the yeah. life battery. Yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. it's like when, when uncle Joe's talking, he's like, and then the raw, 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 And somebody gives him like a defibrillator. Boom, boom. And he goes, Hoo! and yeah. they jumps up. They stand needed a clear. Boom. Oh. <laughs> so I just said to Gil, I go, hey, I'm going to finish the pitch with you. I'm going to leave this. I never leave my pitch, but I'm going to leave it so he can read it. Let's just let him sleep out the rest of the yeah. meeting. So I do the rest of the pitch to Gil. Stands asleep. He wakes up right as I'm leaving. And he goes, great story, young man. And I was like, thanks, buddy. All right. I hope to hear from you later. That's amazing. Yeah. What, when was this? What year? And why was I not there? You were too young. Oh. Um, what year? Shit. Trying to think what agency I was with. I think I was with CAA. So that is a long, a long time ago. Long, long time ago. Yeah, that's a while ago. I was with the Death Star and they repped me and they did such a bad job. Um, <laughs> that's so dope though. I didn't know you ever met Stanley. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it was, awesome. it was crazy. And the idea was amazing and they loved it. And I wrote a script and then he died. Oh, and, and then it turned out. Yeah. Yeah. Actually mine was the one they were like, you know, I'm sure they chose a couple other ideas, but they had me write a script and I needed a spec script at the time. So I wrote it. I still have it. It's actually a show that I, a, a movie that I, I built out, I think is better as like a, can I read it? Yeah, absolutely. I'm not going to tell you the idea because no, 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 I, just, I don't want anyone to take it. Yeah. No, yeah I just want to read it. I just want to read it. That's of course. Not, that's of course. fucking so cool. Yeah. See, this is one of those moments where like people ask me, they're like, when did you know your dad was famous? And for a long time, I mean, you know, I, huh. they asked me that a long, like a lot, a really? lot, a lot. Who does? Well, not, not like nowadays, but a lot growing up, it was like, yo, do you know your you know, your dad's famous. Like when we'd go on tour, like when I'd come with yeah. you or we'd be with Cable Guy or Chels or whatever, like even on the tour road, it's just you and me. I don't consider myself famous, by the way. You know that, right? I don't consider you famous. Okay, good. Thanks for saying that. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You're my dad. I, yeah. It just, that's yeah, yeah, like, yeah. if you, even if you were fucking Tom, like Tom Brady famous or not, to me, you're just my dad. Right. Like that's just what it is. But a lot of people do ask me that question. And mainly, it, like, the first recognition really for me was, like, well, I did go on TV and ask a girl to homecoming. That was pretty you did. fucking legit. Yep. Um, but just for my own sake of when did I know, like, how do I know my dad is famous? Not when he was, but how do I know he is? This is one of those stories where I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's actually, like, a person of interest type shit. Like, Dude, you, I mean, you're not, you are my dad, but you're not just my dad. Like, you pitched a fucking script to Stan Lee, which is bonkers to me. That's fucking I, I, awesome. I also interviewed Bill Gates. I know that. Not as cool as Stan Lee. 
kind of crazy. They're not not even close to as cool as Stanley. I did. I've done a lot of. I have to tell you, man. I I I've done so many things in my career and been so lucky. I I'm so grateful between the sporting events that I've gotten to go to and cover between the amazing people that I've met between and the venues that I've got to play and the mm-hmm. countries that I've got to travel to. And I would tell you still the best of all of it is touring with you. That's very nice of you, man. I really appreciate that. I, I still, we've done some pretty cool shit together. Listen, listen, all those other things that I've mentioned, a lot of people in my position get to do, but every time I hear from another comic, it's about, dude, how fucking cool is it? You get to tour with Jacob. No one does what we do. It's without a doubt, man. I know it's, and I say it every time I'm on stage and every interview I ever do now, but I didn't know this was the dream until it started happening, yeah. you know? And so like, sorry, it took so long. No, man. <laughs> it, look, it all happens at the right time. Yeah. And I, this is, I don't honestly, maybe 15 years ago when I wanted more of more, more, more on me, more! right. I wanted more on me, more on me, more on me. I don't, although it's you. So I probably would have been good with whatever. But I, whenever somebody says something to me about you being funnier or something good about you, my response is always good. I want him to be funnier. I want him to have a better life in every way. All of my kids. I want all of them. The goal for me is for all of my kids to have a better life in every possible way. Yeah. That's my goal. On that same note, you know what Iman told me in the car last night? Huh. So that I look like Matthew McConaughey? Actually, never has she once mentioned it ever. Yeah, no, 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 mm. not at all. Okay, Does she, she think you look like Ryan Gosling? No, <laughs> she makes sure I know that I don't look like Ryan Gosling. Do you think you look more like Ryan Gosling, or I look more like Matthew McConaughey? Can I answer neither? <laughs> No, because you know that's not true. Which one do you think is more? Is I mean, closer? I guess I would pick you because I you, look thank you, zero thank you. like Come, I look make zero. The clip, Matt, make the clip. I, I look zero like Ryan Gosling, and you I look, look ninety-seven like Matthew McConaughey. One like Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> Which part? Which part? I don't. Even, I can't. White even skin. <laughs> yeah, you're an old white man. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I would choose. I, but listen. Uh, wait, 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 wait. And wait, we wait. have the same bodies. No, no. You pulled up a video of Ma- a picture of Matthew McConaughey's abs last week. I've seen you with your shirt off every weekend. You don't look like that. That's exactly what I look like. Prove it. I, you just go on my Instagram, everybody. <laughs> exactly. Just go on my Instagram. <laughs> he's gonna, yo, don't go on his Instagram because he's legit gonna take that beach picture of McConaughey and face face like Photoshop his face on top of it. I, don't, I fucking know he is, Matt. I, I fucking know he is. I clearly don't have to do that. But I don't I, think you also know how to use Photoshop, so you can't zero do it. <laughs> chance that I'd be able to do that. Ah! Yeah, yeah. I, I remember I downloaded Ooh. Adobe Workshop Photoshop Print. It's got some of those words in it. <laughs> <laughs> Adobe's the brand. Photoshop is the app. Oh, is it that what I downloaded? The Adobe Photo Print Shop. Adobe Photoshop. Adobe, the guy from Harry Potter. <laughs> Adobe. 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 Adobe is a free elf. Adobe Photoshop. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Anyways, I have that on my computer. I'd like you to show me how to use it. Uh, Iman can show you how to use it because I don't fucking know how to use it. What did Iman say on the ride home? We were in the car and she said we were driving and I didn't, I, I did like my set last night, but it was just like a nursing home crowd. It was, they loved my AOL joke. Um, and so I wasn't super happy with my set. Last, I mean, I just wasn't happy with like the overall, I guess, energy in the room, you know? And uh, I was saying that on the ride home. And then she said, you know what your dad says to me every time I come to a show? And I go, what? She goes, every time I come to a show, whether it was they're two weeks in a row, a month apart, whatever, he always comes up to me and says how proud he is of you about getting up there and how you're getting better and how you're trying new things. It, she was like, he just always preaches to me how proud he is of you. I am. I'm super proud of you. Yeah, it was very nice. Very nice to hear that. From her. I mean, I know, I know, I know you are proud of me. I tell you all the time. You tell me all the time. Yeah. But still to hear you talking to my girlfriend with like the 
the time you guys have together, you could be in the, the 10 minutes I'm on stage. Y'all could be talking about fucking anything else. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? A, a gazillion other things. Yep. And yet that's still the topic of conversation. And I, I think that's very nice. And I appreciate that. Well, uh, of course, dude. I, I watch, you know, I have to balance dad and comedian mm -hmm. all the time with you. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, be, it, 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 it's, it, but I lean towards comedian because you don't need your dad when you're trying to get better. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't need your dad when you're trying to get better. You need somebody who's been doing it as long as I have to be like, Hey, and here's the thing. Also, I know that at any point in time, if I need you to turn the dad on, whoa, pause. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that 100% is a saying I'm going to start using. Come turn the dad on. <laughs> Come on over here and turn the dad on. Pause. Hey, babe, get in here. You know what you got to do right now? Come turn the dad on. Yeah, dude. I, I wish I could do a Hank Hill voice because I would be like, Bobby, Bobby come. Bet, God, God, bro, bro, God, come in here. Turn God, the dad on. God damn it, Bobby. God damn it. Turn the dad on. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Mom, I'm so sorry that that's going to show up at the house now. Are you kidding? Tonight I'm going to whisper in her ear. <laughs> Turn the dad on. <laughs> you know what time it is? It's time to turn the dad on. Boom. Just hear Marvin Gaye start playing in the background. Really Anyways, um, but I know at any point in time, if I need you to, you know, you know. Turn the dad on. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> sure, we'll stick with it. That I know you can. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if dad needs to show up, dad shows up. You know what I'm saying? He's got an on-off switch, apparently. Let me tell you something right now. <laughs> God damn it. I'm so mad at myself for that. Yeah, because I'm going to have to write a song called Turn the Dad On. Dude, you're going to... Okay, speaking of writing songs, Matt, this is the perfect transition for this. Okay. The Kendrick Lamar Drake beef, right? Can I just say off the top of my head? Yep, go ahead. And I know I'm old white guy. But rap battle beef is so bad. Let me actually make an a, 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 a addendum real quick. It's the single dumbest but smartest <laughs> thing. The fact that 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 because if it's real, it's the dumbest fucking thing. I just also don't know what causes it. Like it's just, what, so petty and stupid and fucking dumb. If it's real, now if it's to generate clicks and spins, which I think it is. But Smart, smartest I, thing in the world and the people who are falling for it, you're the fucking but dumb Can I fuck. ask you a question yeah. from that point of view? Yeah. You're not a big modern day rap guy, but you know who Drake and Kendrick Lamar are. I do. They're, Kendrick is going to go down as one of the greatest of all time. Okay. Drake, on the other hand, is our is what I think of as my, gener my generation's rapper. I had a little hiccup, sorry. Okay. Like, with the amount of stuff he's put out, Drake is is. Quantity over quality. Okay. 100%. I don't understand the point. Just, I'm getting there. Okay. God. <laughs> Kendrick is quality over quantity. Like, his, you look at his four studio albums, that's beside the point. They're just all, all greatest of all, they're, they're all time hits. Why are these two making diss tracks to get clicks and spins? They don't need them. That's my question, is if it's not real to get clicks and to get plays, why? Because they both have, Drake has like over a billion plays every month. Dude, but nothing keeps you relevant than your name being, more than your name being in the news. Drake, okay. listen, Drake out of Drake. anybody knows how quickly you're there and then you aren't. That's it. And for Kendrick, same thing, man. N nothing. And I know you disagree with this, but I don't. Being an artist and, I, and I'm... I'm going to take your word for how good he is and how revered he is in the business. So for guys like that to be like, everybody loves me, but why is this dude outselling me by quadruple or whatever the fuck it is? That's where that petty shit comes from for sure. Yeah. But also on that same note, it's just, it's not that Kendrick can't do what Drake does. He cannot. I disagree. He Kendrick, you're, I'm telling you, as a fan of Kendrick and as a fan of Drake, yeah, Kendrick 100% could sell stadiums out like Drake does. 
Kendrick just doesn't, he doesn't go on tour. He doesn't put music out every year. He takes, he takes four years to put out an album. Dude, he put out Good Kid, Bad City in 2012, which is his first studio album, okay. which is my favorite album. I've, that album's a banger. It's high school. I love it. He then put out a, an album called To Pimp a Butterfly, which won seven Grammys and is one of the most critically acclaimed rap albums of all time. Okay, I'm getting there. Just hold on. Damn, his next album, okay? Won a Pulitzer Prize award. No rap album has ever done that. Dude, nobody's questioning this dude. But that's what I'm saying is he can do what Drake does on the road. But Drake is constantly, Drake has the money mindset. Kendrick doesn't. Dude, Kendrick's not worried about money. He's is, worried about legacy. There's a difference between a somebody who's way more appeals to the masses with their music Justin Bieber, okay? okay? So say Bieber, Bieber appeals to the fucking masses, masses, masses. I love his right? music, by the way. Yeah, man. But it's not like you have other artists saying this dude is the best of all time. But he appeals to the masses yep. in a huge way. I, I'm, I, I don't know enough about modern music to give you a, an example of like somebody who's maybe winning some awards or who the modern era musician really likes. Yeah. They just don't sell as many tickets because they're not appealing to the huge wide swath of people. That's what I would compare. I'm not saying this dude can't sell a ticket and I'm not saying he doesn't know how to write a song, but he doesn't know how to write a pop song like Drake. That's not his, that's not who he is. Has he written pop songs like Drake? Like Drake? No, he's got some. I mean, he's got some. Has he had the commercial success that Drake has? No. Okay, so you can't tell me he can Guess write that not. music because he's not. Yeah, but Drake doesn't write his own music. But to, this is not the point. <laughs> I'm not saying Drake's a better artist than this guy. What I'm saying is, it's like, can I give you an example? Sure. All right. There, I had a friend of mine named Brody Stevens. R.I.P. Brody Stevens. Who was a comics comic and people would run in from the back. Other comics would run in to see his set. Right. And I, I've always been, I've always loved seeing things like that, but it's never happened for me. Right. Right. P my other comics aren't running for me. Not yet. But, but Brody also didn't sell any tickets. Right. And I remember sitting in the back of the comedy store with him one night, we were just watching some comedy. And I said, uh, dude, What's it like having the respect of all of our peers? They run in to see your set, dude, from everywhere. Everybody, it's like nobody was here. And as soon as you walk on stage, there's like 15 comics in here. And he goes, what's it like being able to pay rent with money that you make from your job? <laughs> you sell tickets. Yeah. And this is what I'm saying. When you're in it, you don't, this is why what I'm saying, this is magnified by a gazillion but if brody's kendrick and i'm drake you're looking at it from the other way i'm sure drake a hundred percent would love to have the respect of his peers because he gets shit on a lot by people who consider themselves artists that's hard right i'm sure this dude who gets all of <clears throat> the fucking love and all of the respect from peers and critics is like, I can't, how come I can't sell a quarter of a ticket that this dude does? Huh. And so I think there's some jealousy in there. And I think, you know, can you imagine if like Chris Stapleton and Sturgill Simpson started writing diss tracks about each other? It's the dumbest fucking thing, but the smartest I have ever. And the people who fall for it, God bless you, dude. But just watch a Yo Mama show. That's what we're doing. Yeah. It's Yo Mama disc. I, I will say I'm in a very neutral ground because I love both artists. Like yeah, I'm no, not no. picking, I'm not picking one or the other. Yeah. Um, because I just I still like both music, both people's both artists' music. And I will say every track that drops, I'm like, oh, they're winning. Nope, he's winning. Nope. But he's this winning. is why I say smart, because they are all every single person who's a fan of both of these people are listening and other people. And the haters. 
It, like Kendrick's like Kendrick fans are listening of to Drake's course. disses, and Drake fans are listening to Kendrick's disses because they're trying to pick it apart. Both fan bases are listening to both. It's super smart because yeah. you know who else is listening? Casual fans. Yeah, I listened to, and you know I don't give a fuck, but I'm like, what is this? So you're this is real smart. We're gonna see a bunch of yeah more coming yeah. out because this has dominated the news for the last yeah. Okay, yeah. so I the beat I'm about to play you right now is not Kendrick or Drake. This is okay, this is how this all started. Let me just real quick. There's a producer named Metro Boomin, who you see up there. Okay, yeah. Metro Boomin and Future, the rapper, who I like also. Who yeah. you, don't, you like some of his stuff, it's not really. It's kind of trappy. I don't like it. Yeah, he's got some pretty vibey stuff, though. Okay. Anywho, they did an album together. Metro has been known for doing this with artists. He's done it with Big Sean. He's done it with uh, uh, 21 Savage. He's done it with a ton of other people. So it's just all Metro produced beats and only Future on the album. So, on the last song of the album is where the Kendrick verse came from. The last song of the album is called Like That. And that's where we all kind of discovered that, that Kendrick was sending shots at Drake and J. Cole, right? Mm -hmm. So with all of this going back and forth, whatnot, whatnot, Metro, Metro Boom of the producer, because in one of Drake's songs, he says, Metro, shut your whole ass up and go make some drums. Like, go make some beats. Like, why are you doing any of this? Mm -hmm. This is the beat that Metro released. And I'm not going to lie, this beat is four minutes I, it takes me 20 minutes to get here. I listened to this song five times on repeat. There are zero lyrics. Zero lyrics. Just like kind of like a background, like vocals, but the beat. I just want you to also read the lyrics on screen. I thought you said there's zero lyrics. It's just, it's like, you know when you hear a song and you hear like somebody kind of in the background yeah. while the dude is rapping over it? It's that. Okay. So, but also Metro has accused Drake of getting a BBL. You know what that is? Mm -mm. A Brazilian butt lift. So, you know, when girl, like when the girls, they, they, they pretty much just like, in layman's terms, yep. rearrange their fat. Yep. And so that's when girls get, end up with a massive ass and curves. And it's no, like, I get you know, it. a yeah. BBL. So he's, uh, he, what? I mean, it's pretty silly. It's silly, but listen to this beat. This okay. beat is like, I, and just the lyrics that come on stage or stage screen. Go ahead, Matt. BBL, 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 the beat itself, I love so much. It's very like 70s. Yeah, it is. Like, this This is what I expect, right? No, it does. It feels like... <laughs> Got the best BBL in history. <laughs> Wait, ready? Ready here? Oh, yeah, it's pretty good. What do you mean there's no words? This is just, but like, this is like the, this isn't a song. Like, this isn't what it is. This is, he, he released this beat and said, whoever raps the best verse over this gets this beat. Like, I will give ah. you the rights to this beat. These yams deserve a trophy. Baby, ain't no mystery. I got the best BBL in the history. Like, <laughs> like I, this beat is crazy. Like, it's that's, pretty good. that's all I needed. Man. It's I pretty good. It. But that little drop right there was so good. Like, yeah, I actually would listen to that song. Dude, I'm waiting for somebody to actually drop a track because, yeah. like, honestly, that like, beat goes crazy. Like, it's like a, it's like Foxy Brown. Was, yeah, it's like wait, a theme song from Foxy yeah, Brown. Yeah, wait, will you go back, Matt? I want to hear the drop one more time. I just can't, like, was it like 40, a little more? Yeah, something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so good. I don't know why. I fucking, like, yeah, I right like now, it. I think Metro's winning this war just by this well, beat. Well, this song's good. Just by the beat. It's so fucking. And it's silly. BBL Drizzy BBL is silly. <laughs> BBL Drizzy. Like, yeah, it's, it's silly. I like it. <laughs> I'm thinking that a ninja, these yams deserve a trophy. Yeah, it's so you got good. got the best BBL in the history. It's, yeah, it's crazy. Good. I'm good. That's all I wanted to show. All right. But, yeah, I just thought you would enjoy that. Because it is You're silly, right. but also that beat goes, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Dude, that, how'd you get my arm on there? Oh, this is the next thing I want to show you, Matt. I <laughs> were talking about this. He showed me this this morning, or told me this this morning before I walked in. BBL Drizzy. Yeah, you're going to be, it's going to be BBL Drizzy. <laughs> BBL Drizzy. All right, what do we got? Yeah, okay. So this is something that I didn't know about The Rock. 
I think we should just play the video, Matt, right? I don't think we should even explain anything. I think we should just we should just play the video, and that's what we're going to do. And hit me. I want to show you a brand new colorway for the Rock Delta training shoes. Here we go. This is called Desert Sand. It's a badass color. Never seen before. Look at the bottom. The training shoe. And I, I just realized you also, you just saw my big bottle of, uh, of pee. <laughs> Look, I go hardcore when I train. I don't have time to go to the bathroom. I find a bottle, I pee in it, and I keep training like a beast. This November, USDNA, get ready. <laughs> I don't hate that. I know you don't. I actually think you love that. Yeah, I would, if I had my own gym like this, I would have, I would 100% pee in a bottle. How wild is that, though? It's dude. just, dude, that, the bottle. Like it's what I love about this dude too. Also, his piss was neon. By the way, he like, could have yeah, just like reshot he, that. He can't be that. He can't be that healthy. His pee doesn't look that. That's healthy. a lot of vitamins right there. Baby, Trizzy. <laughs> Baby, Yo, Trizzy. I'm not gonna lie. I, I I might walk out to it. And, uh, Baby, Trizzy. <laughs> like, is a joke. Fuck yeah, dude. Just walk out on that beat drop and just I got the best BBL in the history. It's, Baby. Yeah, I'll send you the YouTube link because I've I've listened to it in the car. Yeah, I'm gonna have. Times. How do I get it on my Apple Music? You don't. It's only a YouTube. It's only a a, a drop on YouTube. Yeah, so. I don't know. I don't know how to play that in my car though. You just go to YouTube and hit play, huh? You just go to YouTube and hit play in my car. Go to YouTube on your phone, huh? I don't know why I'm entertaining this. Baby, I don't dream it. <laughs> Dude, this this guy right here, I would totally pee in a bottle. I. I would pee in a bottle. I would shit in a bag not to leave the gym. 100%. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that's some psycho shit right there. Yeah, I don't mind doing that. That is some psycho shit. I've thrown up in the trash can and kept working out for sure. I will say, I'm trying to think. I don't think I've ever thrown up mid-workout. I've only ever thrown up oh, I have. post-workout. Oh, I've thrown up mid-workout. Nah. I'm in for it. I've only ever thrown up post-workout. Dude, I was so mad yesterday at the gym. You seemed a bad period. Yesterday. I was. I was mad yesterday. I, I know. I know. And I will tell you, dude, being mad like that at the gym, I I love it. Did you go to the gym prior to me coming over? Yes, you did. Yeah. You were still mad when I got there. Oh, dude, Delphine was like, oh, you're mad today, huh? I was like, yeah, let's just fucking do this. Did she still, did she try to piss you off or did she? She laughs. Just... That's what I love about her. She knows. Mm, psycho. I got to send you the video she sent me of her when she was working in the Cirque show. Oh, sick. Dude. Oh, will you also send me that video of me singing? Yeah. Wait, you gonna post it? it? No. Well, I gotta see it first. BBL Trizzy. <laughs> I love how much you love BBL it. BBL Trizzy. It's pretty catchy. Like, it's, yeah. it's pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty, we should write something to it. We should write, you know what we should do, dude? You said do do. We should have a rap battle. Well, we, were you and I write diss tracks against each other? Wait, we've well, done that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually cut it in there. Oh, we have done that. Okay. Um, all right. Listen, dude. Let tell everybody what we're doing. Well, <laughs> first and foremost, thank you guys always so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it. The shows and the energy and everyone showing up uh, has been outstanding. But Tavia, thank you, thank you, thank you again. This week, when this airs, we will be performing uh, May 9th, Netflix is a joke comedy festival in Los Angeles at the Bourbon Room. I'm so excited. I'm not gonna lie, I get goosebumps thinking about it because ever since I started doing comedy. I've been waiting for the day that I get to go up and say Los Angeles, how we feel it. Because that's the city I grew up in. And I'm, it's like, it's pretty exciting for me, just like in a, yeah. in a, in my new career. With that being said, we're also in Philadelphia this weekend. Our big, our, our, our best friend, Lee Syatt will be joining us. We are in Austin, Texas the week after May 19th. Lee Syatt will also be with us that weekend. Oklahoma excited. City the week after that. Uh, the Not OKC, that week after OKC. that, but the week after after that. I wonder after if, I wonder if OKC is still going to be in the playoffs. Maybe. Might have to go see a game. That'd be amazing. That would be dope. Um, for anything else, any info, uh, tickets, where we are, comedianjoshua.com for tour dates and tickets. Um, go see us. Come see us. We are everywhere. We are having so much fun. Um, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much again and again for the newbies, the oldies, for those who are hearing this in the future and will join us in the future. Thank you, thank you, thank you. None of this is possible without any of you. And last but not least, do something nice for somebody today. Tell somebody you love them. We'll see you all next week. Hey, guys. Oh, okay. one last thing. It's not how we're ending it. Yeah, uh, one last thing. You got to cut me off next time. Uh, <laughs> one, one, one last thing. <laughs> if you like what you're listening to, if you like what you're watching, Please tell uh, somebody like-minded person who you think might like it as well. 
Don't forget to leave comments, download, rate, subscribe, all those things. Uh, they, they, uh, the algorithm likes it. And it turns out, guys, we're all sucking the algorithm's dick. So let, get in there and slurp it, slurp it for us. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.